Hey parents, hi, I am Miss Nina. I'm the owner of East County Performing Arts Center and I'm super excited to be doing this video for you today because that means that you are interested in learning more about our amazing competition team that we have at the studio. So thank you for your interest and I'm glad to share some information for you. So first of all, I wanted to explain to you what a competition is and kind of like what your life would look like while your child is on competition team. So a dance competition, excuse me as I look away because I have notes and stuff. Uh, a dance competition is a chance for dancers to go and compete in dance competitions. They compete against other dance studios in their age category and in their dance genre category. For example, there may be a group of um, seven to eight year old small group jazz or eight to 10 year old large group contemporary. So all of the kids are grouped against other competitors within their age and genre and group size. Um, all of the competitions we attend are within driving distance. Some competitions will award trophies, some will award with ribbons, some will, of them will award with cash. So that's kind of exciting too. Um, we do, depending on your level, um, I'll go over the, different, the two different level options for competition. Um, but all of our competitions that we go to are within about an hour and a half driving distance. We go about as far as San Jose to Sacramento, San Mateo, kind of in that in that little that little geographic circle, um, about an hour and a half. If you are choosing a level of competition team that goes to nationals, we do travel to our nationals. Um, we are either in uh, Las Vegas or in Southern California for our nationals, um, but that is just at the end of the year. So the other, um, the other thing that I want to talk to you about is what is a dance convention. So a dance convention is a weekend long event where dancers get to take classes from master teachers or in or industry professionals. Classes started about eight o'clock in the morning run all day long on Saturday until about three o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, typically there's a competition on Saturday night and then they come back to class and do the whole thing again on Sunday. They attend class from about 8 a.m. until about three o'clock in the afternoon. Then there is a closing show and you get to go home. During the weekend, there are chances for the dancers to audition for um, scholarships or summer studies, to, uh, scholarships to go back to the convention the next year different prizes, and it's just a really great learning experience for the kids. Can be exhausting, can be overwhelming, but a ton of growth happens at these conventions. So um, that's kind of uh, an explanation of what that is. Um, and so I will jump in to all of our information. So if you haven't already, on our website, brentwooddance.com, is um, if you click on performances and you scroll down to competition team, you will find a full page there that talks about our auditions and um, our parent handbook is there. The audition application is there. Our tuition structure is there. Everything there is there that you need to be able to make your decision if the competition team is right for you or not. So I hope that you have looked through the parent handbook. Um, I'm gonna kind of go over it with you now so uh, to hopefully clarify any questions that you might have. So I wanted to talk first um, about our culture and how our team is very much rooted in culture and some of the, the studies that your teachers and I have been doing um, is, some, uh, is some books that we have been like devouring over these last couple years. So in your parent handbook, there's actually like a recommended reading list that you and or your kids, if they're interested, can look at. And some of these books have been um, just really, really good for setting the, the tone of our program. Um, so that's there for you. If you can only pick one, um, grit would be my number one thing. It's a little bit academic and sometimes hard to read through. So I did Audible, which I'm obsessed with Audible. Um, so that was a good one. But she also, Angela Duckworth has a TED Talk too. So if you just want to watch the TED Talk, she's great. So look at grit, Angela Duckworth. Um, okay, so class requirements. Let me talk about the difference between our level one and our level two teams. A level one team is definitely less commitment than level two. 
So in level one, there are no lines. There are no big groups. There's just the small groups. Um, for our Sparkle Squad, which is our youngest, we have two groups of Sparkle Squad. One is for ages four and five, and the other is for ages um, six to eight. They are only required to take one little combo class, either their combo or boogie babies, depending on what their age um, is available for them. And then they just have a half hour of their choreography or rehearsal class. Um, and then that Sparkle Squad just follows our regular tuition structure with that because it's only um, one class plus their half hour choreography class. And that's the same if they were doing um, Sparkle Squad Jazz, and they could also do Sparkle Squad Tap if they wanted to do that. Um, they could do Sparkle Squad Hip Hop if that was the case. So all of those are available if we have enough kids who are interested in doing those. Um, as they get a little bit older, uh, for a jazz team, they are required to take one ballet class, one jazz tech, and a half hour choreography and rehearsal class. And the same kind of rings true for um, whether it be tap team or contemporary team, they take their tech class, they take um, their uh, ballet class, and they take their um, rehearsal class as well. So this level one is very, uh, it's an easy schedule to manage for sure. Um, anytime a dancer is taking less than three hours a week, they stay within our regular tuition table. Once they're taking more than three hours a week, they jump to our competition tuition table. Um, okay, so one of the big things with competition team that um, you have to look at is your child's attendance. So if your child is, I skipped a page here and I didn't talk about my level two. Let me rewind. See, this is what happens when I skip pages. Okay, I'm gonna rewind. Before I talk about attendance, I'm gonna go back to talk to you about what is level two. Oh goodness, it's late. I shouldn't be doing these videos at 10 o'clock at night. All right, so level two. For under eight years old, seven and under, they if they're on a jazz team or a contemporary team, they take one ballet class, one jazz tech, and um, a half hour choreography or a rehearsal class. So the same as for tap, they take a tap tech um, and uh, I'm reading here, a tap tech and either a ballet or a jazz tech and then their half hour choreography class. Um, so if they have their, their main study subject that they're studying, tap, jazz, contemporary, they also have to take a tech class along with that. So if a dancer wants to do a jazz team, a tap team, and a contemporary team, they also need to do a jazz tap, a jazz tech, a tap tech, and a contemporary class. Um, for hip hop, we don't mandate that they, we don't say that they have to take a hip hop class along with a hip hop team. That could be added on um, without having to add on the two teams there for um, a technique class. Um, once they turn eight years old, they are, and they, if they are in a jazz or a contemporary team, they do have to take two ballet classes a week. Um, that's a little bit different than if they're seven and under. And then if they turn eight throughout the year, they should add that second ballet class, um, when they turn eight. Um, and then the other differences between level one and level two is level one only does three competitions and our in-house Elevate convention. In August, we do our own um, convention. We bring in master teachers um, that come in from all over the United States and they teach classes all day on Saturday and all day on Sunday. They all, the kids also get to audition for um, scholarship opportunities and to come back for the next year. And we have um, other conventions that donate uh, scholarships for them. So it's kind of a cool opportunity for them to have all of that good experience um, at home without any additional travel costs that could be involved. Um, and Elevate is August 10th and 11th. So mark your calendars now. Um, okay, so that was level one. They attend three competitions and the Elevate convention. Level two, we do five competitions. Two of those are conventions. So they're not two additional conventions, but two of those events, of those five events are conventions. So they will be conventions with competitions combined. They do Elevate Convention, um, August 10th and 11th. And then our nationals that we go to in June, 
at the end of June um, are in San Diego, and that is also a convention. This year we are going to Hollywood Connection, and it is in San Diego, and it, I believe, is like the last week of June um, for that. So uh, put that on your calendars as well. So what happens after auditions? So I really want our new families to understand that competition team is not about being like good enough to be on competition team. It's more about having a group of dancers who are well put together. For example, if I have a dancer who is a little bit more on the beginning side, um, not a whole lot of experience, but very passionate, she really wants to dance, I can't put her or him with a group of advanced 10 year olds because that's just that's not fair for either of, of the of the kids and for any of the kids involved. We want to make sure that the kids are put well together, that they dance well together, that they are um, on a in, in similar um, spaces with their technique and their abilities. And so we just want to make sure that uh, the kids are all well represented and, and well put together. So if I have a if I have eight, Ten new 10 year olds with not a whole lot of experience that are like beginner dancers, I can definitely take all of those kids and put them together on one team together and have a fantastic um, novice group of 10 year olds. So just keep that in mind that it's not really about being good enough. It's about having enough kids who are similarly um, matched with technique and ability um, dance level to be able to accommodate them. So just keep that in mind. If your child does not make team, uh, you will be contacted within that first week very, very quickly. And you'll be contacted with a message that says, congratulations, your child has made performance company and we are so excited to have her join us. Um, and if they do, you will get an email and get followed up with a um, the date and time and place of our contract signing meeting. Um, and any other follow-up information that you, that you might need. Um, so during the audition, it's very it's very relaxed environment. The kids come in in a large group. They learn a combination. Um, we might take them across the floor and see their skills if we if we need to. Um, and then we send them into the other room so they can practice. They'll we'll split them into smaller groups and we'll bring them in into smaller groups. Sometimes we do it by age, sometimes we do it by level, sometimes we do it by last name, like we mix them up whole lots of different ways um, just to see how they audition and, and what we need from them. Um, they're never called in like one at a time, nobody has to do this by themselves, there's strength in numbers, and we wanna make sure that the kids are confident and comfortable. Okay. Um, all right, so once so you've made team, yay, congratulations, very exciting. Uh, let me talk to you a little bit about like what the expectations are and what life is like when you're on the team. So attendance is very important. Um, they're either in class or they're not. Like when they're in class, they're learning, they're growing, they're advancing. When they're not, they're not, but everybody else is. So the, hard, the hardest part is making sure that you are keeping up on your attendance. It is so important for them to be in every class every week. And if they are missing their ballet classes or their technique classes, they really need to make those up. Now, as your child gets older and goes through the ranks of our program and they are 11, 12 years old, we like for them to be able to call in their own absences and be able to schedule their own makeup classes because this dance journey is their journey and they have to take the responsibility for their own dance education and um, having that responsibility is a good thing for them to have. So they can talk with Miss Wendy or Miss Lori. They can stop by and say, hey, I'm gonna miss my ballet class. I need to come for a makeup. Um, those are really great ways for them to be able to get their feet wet in the world of responsibility. Okay. All right, so we do, <coughs> excuse me, we do have a uniform for in class. It's very simple. They wear all black to their classes. All black, no jeans, to, not even to hip hop classes. They wear all black to class. Um, sometimes we will say, hey, you get a free dress week or you get um, you know, team colors week, uh, that sort of thing. But for, for 
the majority of the time, they will be in all black for their uniform. Um, when they go to convention, they can wear whatever they want. Uh, when they are, they will have warm ups and jackets and team shirts. These are what needs to be worn during award ceremony at competition or during the downtime at competition or if they have a break between their numbers. Um, and we do ask for their hair and nails and toenails to be all kept in like natural occurring colors. Uh, one of the ways, one of the reasons why our, our team clean is because visually everybody like um, has the same um, look. They have the same hair. Um, they're doing their makeup the same. So we want it to look, we want their dances to look uniform and doing the same thing at the same time. And so we definitely don't want to call attention to the one girl with green hair, um, which could just throw off the whole visual of the group because dance really is a visual um, sport. It's a visual art. So we have to keep that in mind when we're um, have giant blue fingernails. It kind of draws the eye of the judges. All right, so tuition, how tuition works. Um, we have you guys, if, you're, if your child is taking more than three classes a week, they are on our competition tuition scale, which is on the website. You can take a look at that. Um, but how we work it to help alleviate some of the, uh, the cost of the monthly tuition is we take your uh, 10 months, your 11 months worth of class. We run class from August through, um, through June. That's 11 months. And we take your monthly tuition and we multiply that by 11, by those 11 months. Then we take that total and we break it up into 12 payments. So you're gonna be paying tuition from August, August 1st through July 1st. And that just helps kind of lessen a little bit off the top of your bill. Um, and it spreads it out for the full season long instead of just those 11 months. You do have the option of paying in full. If you pay your year in full, you get 5% off your tuition. So that's kind of awesome for you. Okay. So there is, we also have a 15% sibling discount. In the, pro, in the handbook, it says 10%, but that is a typo. It should be 15% um, tuition discount for your brothers and sisters. Um, if there is any, if there's ever a time that you need a payment extension or some type of a payment arrangement, we will work with you. Um, we want to make sure that the terms are very clear and that the payment plan is very clear and very followed because uh, we don't... Um, keep balances on accounts, they all have to be paid up every month. There's a, uh, we can't register for competition if we don't have all the money collected and we have a deadline that we have to follow. And so we need to make sure that everybody's accounts are kept current. Uh, okay, injury. Um, you know, this is a physical sport these kids are doing and sometimes they're gonna get injured and sometimes injuries will happen in the studio, very, very rarely. Most of the time they're happening outside of the studio. Um, when it comes to injuries, let, let me give you guys an example. So let's say um, I have a dancer who sprains her ankle and is in a boot for, um, I don't know, sometimes these boots are on for like three weeks at a time. So let's say she's in a boot for three weeks and she comes back the week of competition and she's like, yes, I'm out of my boot, I'm ready to go, I'm ready to compete this weekend. Well, she's really not ready to compete this weekend because she has been immobilized in this boot for three weeks. So she, when these kids come out of their boots or braces or slings or casts or whatever it is that they have going on, that immobilization has atrophied the muscle. So if we were to take this dancer who has been immobilized for three weeks and said, yes, great, let's go full out and dance this weekend and dance hard, you're gonna be great. The chances of injury are, are pretty high. So we say that if you have an injury that's going to, to be prolonged for you know more than, than a week or so, like we really need to consider not competing in that next competition. And it's not... Um, it's not a punishment. It's really a safety concern. You know, we want to make sure that the dancer is back. They've missed three weeks of not working out, of not training. Like, could you, you know what it feels like to not go to the gym for three weeks? Like, let's, 
let's lay out that scenario. Like, let's say you go to the gym for two hours a day, five days a week, like a lot of these kids are doing, five days a week, and then you take three weeks off. That day that you go back to the gym, you like want to die. Okay, it's the same thing with these dance classes. All these dance classes, they those classes are their workout. So when they miss their workout, they're missing working out. And there's nothing that we can really do to get that time back because that's really all it is. It's just like time and investment into, into their muscles and into their body. So if they have to sit out that next competition because of an injury, they just have to sit out because of the injury. Like there's nothing we can do to make it happen faster. So keep that in mind that if, if your dancer ever does have to sit out because of an injury, it's not because they're being punished, even though it's awful to have to, you know, think of it. It's just, it just is what it is where we have to make sure that the dancers are safe and that they're performing at their best. Okay. Um, I'm just, I'm not going to read through this whole entire thing. I am trusting that you guys are reading this yourself and that I am going to go over it all at our meeting after um, auditions as well. Um, participation in recital and our spring show is not optional. It is mandatory. You actually purchase your costume um, at the time of your contract signing, uh, which I'll go over in a minute. Um, okay, so let's talk about our competition schedule. So like I said, for our level one, there are three events. For our level two, there are five events, six events if you're counting nationals. So we will set the competition schedule in as soon as we can. In August um, is when we like to get it done. Uh, we can only set our schedule as soon as um, all the companies get their schedules out. So as soon as we have that done, then we send it out to you. So you will get a schedule of dates, uh, but you won't get any information about what event it is or where we're going until a little bit later. <laughs> until a little bit later. But once we have set those dates, those dates are in stone and those dates won't change. Um, so, and we will, then we will announce in about November or so. Here she comes again. Good night, Mom. Good night honey. <laughs> then you'll get um, more information in November uh, on what events we're going to and where they are going to be held. So we do that for a couple of reasons. One, because we sometimes have options um, for competitions. That there might be multiple on the same date. And we want to secure the date, but we like to have the ability to choose um, the competition a little bit later. Um, and the other reason why is, you know, we have always put out our schedule really early in the year. And... Um, we we want the kids to be able to compete against the kids in their community, against you know their their friends that they're going to school with, and um, we want them to be proud of of how they perform and um, and have these relationships with with the kids within their community. And sometimes we find if we put out our dates too early, that um, other uh, other programs might not schedule at the same time. And so that's just not really a whole lot of fun for the kids who want to be able to um, share their love of dance and to share their, their, their wins and their, and their um, advancement with their peers in their communities that they actually live in. So um, so we set the dates but we won't hear from the competition about what days or times the kids will be performing until about two, on average, two weeks before the actual date. So for example, let's say we have a competition on April 15th. Um, we won't know, you won't know what, what day or time your child is dancing until probably about April 1st, really. Um, sometimes it's even worse than that. There are some competitions this year that have held out until the week before. Um, but just know that that is not in our control. Like we can only send out the information that we get from the competitions as soon as we get it. So uh, keep that in mind. Um, when you are planning your family life, I would suggest reserving those those whole weekends until 
you know um, when your dancer is going to be performing those, those two weeks before. Um, okay, so some of the required equipment um, that you'll have to get is uh, makeup. And we actually partner with Maid. Uh, she's a makeup boutique in the streets of Brentwood. She has a palette just for East County Performing Arts Center. So you can go over and see her and she could take care of the, the makeup for you. She's, it's not required. If you want to go to Mac or CVS or anywhere else to get your makeup, that's totally fine as long as it has follows the same um, palette and shades. So you can get with a parent who already has the makeup and you can use it to match. Um, but going through made is just really easy because she put together a full palette of everything that you need. Um, but you do have to arrive, you have to do it early. Um, I think she said by like December 1st, half the orders have to be in uh, in order to get them in time for competition. Um, so the dancers will also be required to have performance jewelry and hair accessories. Uh, some dances will require a necklace and earrings and a sparkly hair tie. Um, all those costs are outlined for you in the parent handbook. Um, and rhinestones. We do like to rhinestone a lot of these costumes. Um, you are going to need to learn how to rhinestone. We like to encourage the teams to get together and rhinestone together. It's not as hard as a lot of people think. It's just a lot of glue and a little bit of time. So we have um, so many helpful moms who can um, help talk you through and get together with you and teach you how to rhinestone your kids' costumes. Um, so as far as getting information and communication, uh, Aunt Miss Lori, Aunt, I almost said Auntie Lori. That is so funny. We have an Auntie Lori in our family, and she's always Auntie Lori to me. Miss Lori and Miss Wendy at the front desk are going to be your uh, really great contacts for you to go to with questions or problems. Um, you'll also have a team mom that you're going to be able to reach out to, plus a phone list for all your other teammates of your children's, te uh, your children's teams, and a team leader who kind of oversees the team moms. So... Um, lot of ways to get information if you're missing information. We do put out information on, on ecpacnews.com. Um, there is a special page just for competition team and we try to keep that updated with all the information. We also have a private Facebook group for the competition team parents and there's a lot of like quick little information, questions and stuff that will go up there um, that aren't necessarily um, uh, big studio related either. So we try to cover all of those bases for getting information out to you guys. Okay. We do have a dancer code of conduct in the parent handbook um, that they will have to sign and turn in at uh, auditions. It's really important that they that these kids know and understand that they are representing the studio as a whole. And so their actions can reflect either positively or negatively on their teammates and the studio. Um, and we feel the same way about our parents. You know, we have a really great group of parents. Um, I've really never had any issues like you would see on Dance Moms or any type of that crazy stuff. Our parents are respectful and hardworking and um, just really willing to do anything for anybody. And so we're, I'm pretty grateful to have such a, such a great group of parents that are backing this program. Um, and I think that you will be grateful too when you come and join this tribe. So, um, but we do have high standards on how we expect parents to act. And, you know, there's no fighting at competition. There's no, you know, throwing crazy stuff. And, you know, please be on your best behavior and your best manners. And um, I think that, you know, it just, it's, it's just kind of understood that um, what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. But, um, uh, you know, we always take the high road, uh, keep gossip to a minimum. If there's a problem, definitely come to either Lori and Wendy or Miss Stephanie is our competition director or to myself. Um, don't air your grievances out on social media. Like we want to keep, I, I, we can't help you if we don't know what's going on and, um, you know, airing things out on social media is, is really not the best course of action to do. So we'd like to be able to handle them um, confidentially and swiftly and with respect for everybody involved. So make sure that you um, 
you know, reach out to us if there's a problem and not your keyboard. Uh, okay. So, um, participation. I want to talk about participation at competition. So it's not optional. You can't say, oh, well, I can go to these two, but I can't go to the other three. You're either in or you're out. This is an all or nothing thing. Um, these, this is not like a baseball team where if somebody can't show up to the baseball game, someone else can fill their spot. These kids are so reliant on each other. Uh, the choreography, uh, choreography can be very intricate with partner work or lifts, or um, even if it's not, they still just are so reliant on having their, their people there with them. So you really can't just opt out. Um, there are life events that come up, whether it be, um, you know, grandma's 99th birthday party celebration or first communion or prom. And we do our best to be able to work with you with these events um, because, you know, life does happen and we don't want your dancer to miss grandma's 99th birthday party. That's that's a pretty important thing. Um, so communicate with us. And let us know if there's already something on your schedule that you think might be a conflict. We could give you our feet, our best feedback on whether we think that it would be a problem or not. And maybe come together on a solution on how to fix it. Um, as far as prom goes, we, in the 17 years that I have been doing this, no dancer have ever has ever have, had to choose between prom or um, dance competition. So we've always been able to manipulate the schedule to be able to accommodate them. Um, do plan on still being at the competition until we say two in the afternoon, although we like to try to get them out of there earlier than that. But that's kind of like worst case scenario. Um, so like I said, no dancer has ever missed their prom because of dance competition. And I don't plan on having that change anytime soon. Um, we can't make accommodations for boyfriends or girlfriends proms, only for the dancers prom. So just keep that in mind. Um, dancers are required to show up at competition performance ready with full hair, makeup, and costume two hours before their performance time. Uh, when you come to the competition, we like to gather all the kids together. We like to rehearse. Sometimes our schedule is a little bit crazy, so we might have to rehearse them way in advance before we actually get to put them up on stage. Um, it's just kind of depends on the schedule and what it looks like and how close they are. So we say two hours in advance and um, performance, totally performance ready. Okay. All right, we are getting into some money here. So costumes, so costume deposits. So let me back up. Um, how we work a lot of these extra fees are we put all your fees together and some of these fees together and we break them up into three payments for you. And those payments are at the time of contract signing. And then I think I have this in here. Uh, two other times. September and November, October and November, um, early. And you can choose to pay them all at once or early or on time. That is totally up to you. I can't find it. I can answer those questions on this weekend too when I see you guys. Okay, so costumes. Deposits are $100 per costume. Um, only $50 for tap teams. Tap teams tend to be a little bit less expensive because oftentimes they have to supply their own jeans for their costumes. So we're only collecting a $50 deposit for tap teams this year. Uh, please note that this is only a deposit. Costume Competition costumes can be as expensive as $200. We really try to keep it down in the like 150 to 180 range, but just know that they can creep up to $200 sometimes. Um, Oh, uh, okay, what else do we have here? Uh, okay, jewelry, we talked about that before. Um, we do have a bag, actually I need to find a new bag. 
Um, it's $50, but it's not required. It's just, it is encouraged to have your East County bag. It's nice and big with all your stuff in it. Um, has her name on it. Easy to find. Uh, but like I said, it's not required. Uh, it, your team t-shirt is $25 and national shirt is $40. Um, shoes, we carry all your required shoes in our store. And if we don't have your size, we can order it or, and we usually have it within a week or two. I talked to you about makeup already. The cost to attend competition. Competition entry fees run about $50 to $60 per team. So if your child is on two teams, um, you can expect to be paying $120 per competition. So if they're on two teams and they're in that level two and they're doing you know five competitions a year, so that's about $600 um, in competition fees throughout the year. So that's paid every single time, and that money is due usually about 60 days before the actual event. Conventions cost between $200 and $300 plus competition fees. And remember, we are doing two of those in level two, and in level one, we don't do any convention. Um, hotel stays are not mandatory for either of these events, but may, but may be encouraged depending on what your arrival time is and what kind of an early riser and how far we are. So if your kid gets up at five o'clock in the morning like nobody's business, then you're probably gonna be okay. Um, if they don't like to be up at five o'clock in the morning some days, um, you know, you might wanna get a hotel room for them. But um, not, never mandatory. Uh, this next year, we're actually work, going to work on getting blocks of rooms at some of these hotels and see if we can secure a better rate for everybody. So we'll keep you posted on that. That's kind of a summer project for us. So um, hoping that we can work some magic for you guys. Um, we do have um, a choreography fee of $25 per team and an administration fee of $5 per team per competition will be added to your competition bill. <clears throat> and this fee helps to cover the admin fees and additional fees the studio incurs while registering um, for competitions because it's a lot of work. So um, we also have a yearly part family participation fee. And this fee is per family, not per dancer. So if you are doing one team, your yearly participation fee is $65. Uh, for two to four teams, it's $130. Five to six teams is $180. Seven to eight teams is 220, nine to 10 teams is 270, and 11 and more teams is $320. And this participation fee helps cover your teacher's competition, compensation to be at competitions. Um, and then your recital costume is our normal recital costume price at $85 per dance. Um, that will be a ballet. And any other recreational classes that your dancer is in, um, uh, contemporary is also included in um, recital costumes. So if they're in any hip hop classes or tumbling classes or an additional jazz or a tap class, those would also have um, costumes as well. So out of those fees, we take your team shirt fee, your $25, and your costume fees, your choreography, your choreography fee, and your yearly family participation fee, and your recital costumes. And we put those all together in one number, and then we separate that out into three payments for you. And like I said, the first payment is due at the time you sign your contract. The second payment is due very soon after that. Oh my goodness, why don't I have this information in front of me? That's terrible. And then the third, all of our Payments are done by November. So I think it's like time of contract signing and then like August and October or September and November. I will get those exact payment dates for you. Um, okay, so we, so we don't do individual invoicing for our competitions. You have your competition account that you can log into. You can see your balance. You can see what's coming up due. You can pay everything at one time. You can make your own payments. That's all available for you. Um, everybody does need to be on auto pay for their tuition and their competition fees. Um, 
That is to ensure that we can get everybody registered on time. You are free to come, come in and pay in cash or a check before the auto run date, but we do require you to have um, either a checking account or a credit card on file so we can make sure that everything gets paid automatically and in a timely fashion. Uh -huh. um, if you're late with those fees for any reason, if your card disc gets declined or you make a payment arrangement and you can't follow up with it, there is a $20 per team late fee uh, because we want to make sure that we get this money in on time. Oh, installment pay payments. I got it. Your three installment payments are due at the time of contract signing and August 15th and October 15th. And you're welcome to pay those early. Um, oh, I forgot one thing. We do have a jacket, a new team, a, a team jacket. Usually runs about $100, $110. Um, I had to pick a new jacket this year, so I don't have an exact price for you yet. I'm waiting for new catalogs to come out and everything. So um, for anybody who is currently on team, they don't have to buy the new jacket. Um, but for our all of our new people, you will get the new jacket. I don't know what it will look like yet, so I'm working on that. Um, and I think I pretty much covered everything. I will be definitely around um, at auditions. So while the kids are learning their choreography, I will pop out and answer any questions that you guys might have. Um, and I'm excited to meet you all and see you all at auditions. And I hope this little video was helpful. And yeah, if you guys have any questions, you can always email me, Nina, E-P-K-O-C-H at gmail.com. That is my personal email. So um, shoot me an email if you have any questions. If I don't get back to you within 24 hours and you start to worry and you really need your question answered, you can also email um, the studio. You can, it, Lori will answer you at ecpaccompteam, E-C-P-A-C-C-O-M-P, T-E-A-M at gmail.com. Uh, so yeah, we'd love to hear from you guys and good luck to your kiddos this weekend.